Hey everybody, Will Hamilton here. We're back with Yano Zhu. Hi guys. And today we're gonna to be talking about a concept called personalization. A concept everybody has to understand and want to work into your game. So Jan, why don't you start us off with this concept. What exactly is personalization? First off, I think it's important for people to understand that you have to learn the fundamentals, mm -hmm. okay? And what I love about your course, and it addresses just that, okay? It helps people to really grab and grasp what's necessary for them to turn into a very good player. Things you have to do. You like have to do them. The split step, Correct. the five fundamentals of the forehand, if you've seen that course. Exactly. And there's, there's obviously a lot of that stuff. There's a lot of that stuff. And at some point, you basically have to trust your game mm -hmm. and take it to the next level. Just start to add layers. Okay, to me, personalization is the product of you know, self-expression. You mm -hmm. start to take some of the qualities that your game has and you, know, you express them. You know, it's like a singer who has a beautiful voice and instead of imitating or taking tunes from someone else, mm -hmm. now has you know, the, the confidence to go out on his own and start to write his own song and sing with his own voice, basically, and express his own style. So that's what personalization is about. If I have a beautiful forehand, um, you know, I'd be wasting my time trying to build my game off a back-end okay. rally. You know, I'd probably... Wouldn't make much sense. Make much sense. I'd be better off trying to really find a way to hit inside forehands and, you know, things that actually help my game to be more perforating and, you know, and performing. So that's what personalization is to me. So basically, one way to think about it in terms of all the pros that you're familiar with is in our course, the five, you know, the five fundamentals on the forehand, mm -hmm. We show you, we prove that Federer, Rafa, Sharapova, all these pros are doing five things every single time they hit a forehand. Correct. But no, you know, Federer's forehand doesn't look like Rafa's forehand, and Rafa's Absolutely. forehand doesn't look like Sharapova's forehand. And that's because you have that foundation that mm -hmm. everybody's got, but then they've added layers on top of that. They've personalized their game based on their athletic strengths, their talents, and so on. Absolutely. And also, one element that needs to be brought up is that if everybody does the same there is no room for creativity sure. and then there's stagnation so when you start to be creative and allow your style to express itself with certain forms that maybe look a little strange at first when Nadal first came on stage people were looking at his forehand that reverse and, forehand yeah correct, what is he doing and, absolutely and they felt that this was just not an, a, a correct forehand and now you know I actually go to tennis tournaments and watch some of the new ones coming up and everybody has Everybody's implemented kind of you know, that Nadal forehand. Back in the days, you know, you had John McEnroe was doing, you know, um, taking the ball very early, very little backswing. Very unorthodox style. Unorthodox play. style. And initially people thought of it as being very weird. And then they called him a genius once he got to be number one in the world. So that self-expression is necessary for the game to evolve. And it's also necessary for your own game to evolve. And, you know, for you to gain the confidence to be able to show your stuff. Well, what we're going to do right now, Jan, Everybody knows you out there from all the footwork we've been working mm -hmm. on. And we're going to start personalizing by going back to that stuff, going back to the walking step, hopping step, and so on. And you're going to take us through a drill we can use to start personalizing. So let's get to that. Okay, wonderful. Let's do it. Okay, Will. So now we're going to go through a couple of the steps that we've discussed before. I think it's important for people to know how to train those. All right, so I'm going to have you use the base the service line as your barometer all right okay and what you want to learn is how to move inside and then move back okay it's that element of core penetration that i want you to get familiar with and comfortable with and this is specifically with the walking step and the hopping step right now those are the two main pieces of footwork that allow us to move forward correct it's again you know really reinforcing dynamic footwork and the ability to move up to the ball and then get back to base okay so we always start very, very easy inside the box because okay. to me, you know, this is the place where you get comfortable at slow speed. So right. if you notice, okay, I'm moving inside and then moving back. Okay. There's a so slight back step, okay, back split that makes me, okay, go back to the line. So I'm so going to try to go very slow so that people see the count. One, two. Okay. Right. Let's see that again a couple One, times. One, two. This is on One, the walking step. All right, two. you're loading Correct. on That's that. That's for the walking step. Right. One, two. And people should really just concentrate on their own personal stride. One, two. Okay. One, two. All right. A lot of times what you'd see is you would see people take the first part of the walking step and then sort of freeze. So they'll just go one and then hit. All right. Okay. That's just half 
the step. All right, so show us, I'm gonna show us what it's, it means to do it wrong. Doing it wrong is either just going to the side, which mm -hmm. would be an open, open stance, stance All right. okay? Or going forward and just kind of swinging here. Okay. Okay, that would be a half a step. Okay. That's good in some instances, but that doesn't really take you as far forward as you right. would need to be to be very, very penetrating. All right, your momentum doesn't move through your as much. Your momentum doesn't walk, doesn't go through. And on top of that, you find yourself in sort of an awkward position because now your shoulders are opening up to the left, okay. which is not necessarily what you want to do. So if I want to go forward and I want to play the ball to your forehand, which is your left side, okay, I would make sure that my shoulders stay aligned through my shot to your okay. forehand side or to your left side in your case. Okay, so it's very important to understand that that second step controls the rotation of your hips. One, two, okay? okay? And that rotation of your hips is what controls the direction of your shot. So if I were to go to your backhand, which is your right side, my step would go towards your right side, okay? So I would go one and then two, okay? One and two. Okay. Now you notice that my left foot is pointing towards the target that I'm aiming to. All if right, I go to your left side, it's pointing to your left side, okay? All right. To your right side, that's neutral stance, okay? But to your right side, it's going to your right side, okay? And essentially, it's just this exercise of always having your feet go to the direction of your shot, okay? There you go. All right, that's very good. So that was the walking step. All right. All right. Now I want us to get into the hopping step, okay? The hopping step to me um, satisfies two things. Either it's for people that don't have the flexibility, okay, to do a walking step, or people that need to be able to structure their stroke so that they can control a down the line. Because if you notice, my hips are locked. Yeah. Are more locked than in a walking step. Okay. Okay, it's a neutral stance where you just finish with a hop. Okay. Okay. You'd see um, Federer uses that quite a bit, uh -huh. okay? So this one is also pretty simple, and what you do, okay, is you just load up on your left, if you're righty, and then just take a little hop, like this. And again, you have that element of penetration, okay? For the viewers to see, my starting point is here, okay? And then by the time I'm finished striking the ball, go ahead, okay, you're gonna find me here. All right, let me feed that okay. a little bit deeper for you. Correct. So what you notice is even though you hit, you know, a fairly good shot inside the box, I found myself, okay, okay. really moving in and penetrating the court. As in a regular neutral stance, okay, would have kept me here. Back there, all right. Okay. So in terms of the geometry of the court, there's a difference between a one foot penetration shot to almost 10 feet. Yeah, the hopping step moving you forward. Correct. So when you start to think about time and space, okay, if I'm able to move up here and take that ball while it's traveling to me, think of it this way. If the ball travels to me in four seconds, okay, it's going to bounce here, maybe at second number three. By the time I strike it here, that's going to be second number four, okay? Now the same thing happens on your side if you're replacing. Maybe you're over there at second one, and by the time you get to the middle, that's second four. So if I take that ball at second three, okay, which would be right here, I've essentially taken a second away from you. Yeah. Okay? Which is why that element of, you know, court penetration is extremely important to incorporate into a game. Okay. Okay? And the only steps that will get you there are actually steps that, you know, make you penetrate the court and take those, it early. Those dynamic steps that we talked about in the modern tennis footwork video. Correct. All right, so why don't, we, why don't we just kind of play some short court back and forth so that everybody can see how we're, again, using the service line as our barometer. We're moving forward and then coming back behind it as we're playing some short court, and that's kind of how we're working these steps in Great. As, uh, as we rally. And the other thing that I want to mention, though, is um, in a previous uh, video, a lot of people were saying that this is for average players. Not at all, okay? I play a lot of very, very solid players, okay? Some of them are professional players. And I can tell you that this exercise, if done right, is extremely intense, yeah. okay? And even for the fittest player out there, 
this will get the job done in terms of raising your stamina and raising your level of fitness. All right. Okay, it's very intense and you can make it as intense as you want. All right. Okay, so these are essential drills that you know you can just basically incorporate all right in your footwork so right now we're doing walking steps and as you notice we're doing a couple of stutter as well because that boy is not always going to be where you like it you know you're gonna have to make some adjustments sometimes you see I'm taking an inside step okay all right very good okay very nice okay beautiful so now we can add the hopping step if we want to. You're doing great there. And uh, in my case, I'm really feeling it in the legs. Okay. Talking and playing at the same time when you do a drill that's stamina enhancing. A little, a little tricky. It's a little challenging, but I'm gonna get by. Very nice. So I've noticed you've been doing pretty much all walking steps. Correct. Now I'm gonna do hopping. All right. Okay. All right. And you can tell you know, we talked about personalization. That's a good point to notice is, in my case, I love the walking step. Uh-huh. So, so you'll see the walking step creep up on me fairly quickly. So you like to go with that one most Correct. of the time versus the hopping step. Well, it's a very natural step for me, you know? Okay. And when I personalize my, uh, my drills, I use it a lot. In your case, you seem to really like the hopping step. Great. Very nice. Excellent. So now what Jan and I are going to do is build on the drill we were just doing. We're removing forward and back across the service line. And you can see from the camera's perspective, we've got a couple of targets down here. So Jan, tell us a little bit about what we're about to do with that drill we just did and then adding these targets. Well, self-expression, as you saw it in the previous drill, you know, now sort of gets into your footwork. You know, you start to move in and out in the way that, you know, helps you best. Mm -hmm. I love the walking step. So you notice that, and you even pointed it out to me, that I tend to use the walking step quite a bit. In your case, you're mostly hopping step, and that's the one that's going to, you know, sort of show up often enough. Now we add the element of precision to self-expression because the way that you put together your sequences of shots is personal. Okay, you choose to play maybe forehand, forehand, backhand, short, deep, deep, short. So that sequence is self-expression, it's personalization. In my case, the game is going to look totally different to me. You know, maybe I have a predetermination and I'm going to just go to your backhand often because I like that and then I'm going to play deep. Maybe I'm not able to play short as much. So then you start to see in just, you know, the realm of just four targets, how someone starts to use personalization All and right. self-expression. All right, okay. and it's worth noting, and what everybody's about to see is, we're taking the drill we did before where we were simply moving forward and back on the, uh, on the service line. We've got some short targets, we have a deeper target. Correct. So we're gonna be moving forward and back as well, but then there's that element, that layer we've added of the targets we're aiming for. So we're working on our precision, not just our footwork. So Correct. part of personalization is getting that initial foundation, the footwork, and then you add another layer to it, and then you add another layer to it, and then you add another layer to it, and the way your game is gonna evolve through a drill like this or other drills where you're adding these mm -hmm. you know, more complex elements is that you're gonna develop your own personal style. Correct. The way you work through these drills is gonna be different. There, let me say, the way I work through this drill is gonna be different from the way you work through it and the way you at home work through it is gonna be different from what we do it. And again, that's, that gets to the core of personalization, personalization right there. It's about being creative, and that level of creativity is what makes you you, and makes you express the type of style that you like best. And it's that type of style, once you earn it, that's gonna make you confident and give you the ability to win. It's trusting your shots, not trusting my shots, okay? You wanna trust yours, I'm gonna trust mine, and then we'll see how we fare up. Okay, Will, so now you're gonna use your personal self-expression and figure out how you want those sequences to work for you. All right, let's okay, do it. Okay, so you, know, you add whatever step you wanna add. See, in my case, I always seem to go back to the walking step, inside step, very good. All right, I'm gonna to start to move the ball around a little bit. And what you notice is we also have the tendency to go back to the shots that we like best. In my case, the slice backhand is one of my favorite. 
top spin forehand, same. I have a little bit of touch, so I like to, you know, feel the ball a little bit. Okay, that's the walking step again. Very good. Hopping step. All right, I'm going to do a pivot. Okay, neutral. Very good. That's excellent. All right, walking again. Okay, walking again. Okay, neutral. Walking. Okay, hopping. Followed by pivot. What I'd like the viewers to notice is that the personalization is taking place now, not only in terms of the stroke that you hit, that you hit, but terms of the footwork that you use. Okay, very good. Yeah, I've used a walking step there, but I think I've been mostly going with the hopping step. Absolutely. I've noticed that about you. On the forehand side, and I've played a lot of my backhands down the line because I like to work the ball over to, as a lefty, over to a righty's backhand uh -huh. so that I can get the ball on my forehand side. Very nice. Excellent. And what's important for people to know is not to feel that there is no room for all the neutral steps. You know, neutral, sometimes even close tenses, not my favorites, but there is room for that too, you know? Sure. Now you give me a short ball, that's when the dynamic penetrating step comes in. If I give you something short, see, right away. Great. You hit a target just there. That was excellent. Great stuff. All right. Very nice. So you saw we just ran through this drill. We were moving up and back, working on that footwork. And then we had some targets mixed in there as well. And again, that was all about personalization. So Jan, what did you, what were you doing in terms of your footwork and your shot selection, what did you see me do that might have been a little bit different from you? Well, maybe I'm at a level now where I pay more attention to you. So okay. I was really paying attention to you because the steps become very intuitive to me. You know, I move, I don't even think about it. And that's where I want the viewers to try to work yeah, that's themselves where you want to. Get to. to. Exactly. You want to get to a point where, you know, you start to pay attention to your opponent more so than yourself. But as you're working through those drills, what they should pay attention to is the fact that in a very, very small, you know, environment, just between four targets, we've been able to add a huge variety of steps and a huge variety of, you know, shot selection shots, okay, where you just sort of go slice, top spin, you know, flat, taking the ball early, taking the ball late, neutral, all that stuff. All that was included in, you know, this very small two-minute drill, and it was very intense, and the fitness level was also involved. Yeah, I don't know. People might not have been able to see it, but I was breathing pretty hard towards the end. Well, maybe uh, they definitely. I mean, <laughs> well, they might be able to hear it on the mics. Correct. <laughs> But it's pretty intense and it's a lot of creative, you know, juices flowing because you start to see the game and you express it the way that it feels right to you within, you know, um, the qualities of your own body type. Again, you know, if you are tall, your game is going to look different than if you're short and, you know, if you're a little heavier rather than skinny, the game is going to look different to you. And all those qualities are just that, they're qualities and people should embrace them and feel comfortable expressing them on the court. You know, if you have a powerful forehand, you need to find the game that works in your favor. If you have a slice backhand, then you need to do the same. That's what personalization is about. And let's close by, uh, by uh, talking a little bit about the, the particulars of this drill uh, itself, because you're a big fan of what you call playing inside of the box. Other people Correct. call it short court mm -hmm. in some capacity, and a lot of people aren't really fans of that. But what you can see right now is we have a pretty specific drill that we made up, and there's a couple different elements, but it's getting you to move around a lot, and you really are adding some solid la layers uh, to your game, playing inside the box, playing short court. So just quickly uh, comment on that, please. Well, what's important for people to realize, if you go back to the baseline right away and you play at fast speed, you're not really working on anything but power shots, okay? And all the subtle adjustments that you have to make, they're better made at slow speed. Okay, that's why I like the box is because it's a lot easier to control, okay? If you can't do it in the small box, you're not going to do it in the big box. That's just a fact, okay? You didn't learn how to walk by just getting up and walking. You crawled first, 
and gradually you got the confidence to stand up on your legs and then one day you let go and you walk. All right. So the and same then you applies, run and so on. And then you run and so on. The same applies here. You know, people get very eager and they try to go to the baseline too fast. And then what happens, you never really develop that touch that's necessary and that all takes place here. Okay, I once practiced with a French player um, that was top 50 in the world and I remember he was very, very eager to practice inside the box. You know, and I was very curious about it because he hit the ball really hard and I was like, well, let's just go back to the baseline. And he said, you know, when we move back to the baseline, we never really get the chance to work on the touch. And that's true, okay? Those sensations that you need to have to be able to feel the ball, they're not going to happen back at the baseline when you're, you know, hitting every shot at Mac 3. Okay, so it's important right. for people to get comfortable working here and not feel like they're half a player because they're working inside the okay. box. Okay, it's about building your game, building your confidence and feeling all the steps and all the, you know, different sensations that the game has to offer without going way back right away. So that would be the last part if we bring this all back and close this video, focusing on personalization again, is playing short court, playing inside the box, developing that feel mm -hmm. is going to develop your personal style and it's about personalization and a lot of that can't really take place if you just start back at the baseline and you're swinging one way and you're trying to hit hard but you don't get the feel and the touch you need to play right. at a high level. And from a visual standpoint, if you get comfortable being inside the court, it's not going to be that foreign to you when you have to actually move inside the court. Sure. If you're way behind the baseline and you get comfortable back there, then this becomes a foreign land. Yep. Okay? And we want people to be comfortable inside the court where you take time and space away. All right, guys. Well, please try this drill. Thank you for watching, first of all. Please try the drill. And after you do, please leave us a comment below and let us know what you think. Great.